Most search queries are automatically tracked in GA4, but did you know that auto-suggest search queries are not included? That's why I made a small solution that I'm going to share with you today in this video. Let's go. Hey and welcome to the channel, my name is Leon. This channel exists to help you make more confident decisions in your daily work using your analytics data. If you like what I'm doing, please click the like and subscribe buttons down below. That really helps me get this video out to as many people as I can. Also, if you want to watch more videos, there's a link in the video description to an entire playlist full of videos just like this. All right, auto suggest search. Let's look at an example. What do I mean? Well, here's a site that I probably spent a little bit too much time on. It's a music store here in Europe. And um, this music store has a search box. And there are basically two ways of searching. So let me type in my search query. If I press enter, I get a traditional search results page. This is the first way of searching on this site. And this way of searching is probably already being tracked by GA4. There's one caveat, and that is that GA4 needs to know the query parameter. I'm not gonna explain in detail what that is because I already made a video about that. I will put a link in the video description to that video. But I'm gonna assume that GA4 already tracks this page. And again, if you wanna know for sure and want to check the caveat, go watch that other video. But this is usually already tracked. But there's also a different way of searching that completely bypasses this results page. So we're not even going to look at this results page. So let's type in my query again. So I'm going to go back to the home page. I'm going to type in my query again. And before I press enter, the site already gives me some category pages and some product pages. And if I click a random product here, I do not see a results page, but I'm being taken straight into the product page. So the search results page are bypassed. And by default, this will mean that my search results are not being tracked because I didn't end up on the search results page. So to solve this, I made a small solution that you can download and load directly into your GTM container. So I'm gonna show you how you can import this solution into your own site. And to do that, I have this example site right here. It's a really old site. I chose this site because it's really the only site that I own that even has a search box on it. It doesn't have auto suggest search to be honest, but we're all just gonna pretend that it has. So if I'm gonna press a keyword, for instance, test, we're all just gonna pretend that there's an auto suggest search box underneath it. It's not the best example, but it'll do for today. Then I have Google Tag Manager installed on this site. I'm gonna assume that you have that too on your site. And also you need to download the JSON file, the GTM recipe from my link in the video description. You can have it for free. Use it on your own site, on your client site, doesn't really matter. Have fun with it. But you need to download that and save it to your desktop so you can follow along with this video. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know the procedure. We're going into admin and under admin, we're gonna choose import container. And first we're gonna choose our container file and then a upload box will show up. You can just drag it in and press open. Then under choose workspace, I'm gonna choose an existing workspace. I'm gonna choose just my default workspace. And this is important, we do not want to overwrite because it will remove everything that you had and then bring in the new container. We want to merge. We want to keep what we already had and then import the new container, the auto suggest search solution. We want to import that in our existing container. Well, we can check real quick, are there any modified or deleted text, triggers, variables or templates? It doesn't. So we can press confirm. After we've pressed confirm, there are really two things we need to change. So under tags, we're going into tags, and then we're gonna look for the tag with the name script autosuggest searchjs We're not gonna do too much to this, but there's really one line that we need to edit, and that's line number six, because this script needs to know what input box, what text box needs to be tracked. So we're gonna go back to our site, and you need to do this as well on your site, and then we're gonna find our search box, so it's here at the top, and then we're gonna right click and then press inspect. And that will open up the source code of our site. And do not be overwhelmed by this. It's gonna automatically select the, uh, the, the, the input text box for us. And then in this input element, we're gonna look for an ID. So it's here at the start, ID is query. And I'm gonna, just gonna copy this into Google Tag Manager and I'm gonna replace this word transcript gonna replace it with the word query. So this way I'm gonna tell the script 
to look for like a, an input text box with the ID query. So if you're a little bit confused by this, I've made an entire video about selecting the right elements on your page. I made it last week, so it should be up on my channel by now. I'm gonna post a link in the video description to that video as well. So if you're struggling with finding the right ID, just go watch that video. I hope it will provide a little bit more context. But in order to keep this video short, I'm not gonna expand too much on this. But this is the first step, the first thing that we need to edit here. We need to define the text box that we want to track. So I'm gonna hit save. The second thing that we need to edit here is we need to look for the GA4 event dash search tag. And we need to open that. This is the event tag that also came with the uh, JSON file. And then we need to edit the measurement ID. So you need to look for your own measurement ID and put it in here. So I'm gonna go into my uh, GA4 config tag. I'm gonna just copy the measurement ID that I have here, and then I'm gonna paste it in here. And it will show me that there's a Google tag found in this container, so I'm okay. Now I'm gonna press save. And in order for this to work, we need to submit it, but I'm just gonna first test if this is even working. So I'm gonna hit preview. And I already did this, so I don't know to have to fill in the URL, but if you do this for the first time, you need to fill out your URL and then you press connect. And now we're testing our new solution. So I'm gonna just type in the word test. I'm gonna go back into Google Tech Assistant and I already see in my timeline, I see this auto suggest dash search. And then I see that my GA4 event search was fired with the search term test. Let's repeat the process. Let's search for YouTube. Well, I'm gonna go back. Yeah, I see another auto suggest search with a new tag and then the search term YouTube. And the way that this works is that the script is listening for people to type in to this box. So it will not track anything until they stop typing. So for instance, channel. So now I've, I've stopped for about a second. And now it's probably recorded another suggest search. Yeah, there you go. It recorded another search term with the name channel. So let's look into GA4 under um, admin. And let's go into the debug view screen. Yeah, I already see three search events right here. The first search event has a search term with the name test. That was the first search, yeah. And then the second one should be I looked for the term YouTube, yeah, there you go. And the third one has a search term of channel. Yeah, there you go. So now I can safely submit this solution. I already type in G4 track auto suggest search, and then I'm gonna hit publish. This is how you import my solution into your own Google Tag Manager container. So lastly, I wanna show you how you can build a report around it because tracking data is one thing, but we need to be able to make a report and visualize the data in order to get any value out of it. So to do that, I'm going back into GA4 and I'm gonna click into the exploration reports and we're gonna create a blank report for this. We're gonna call it auto suggest search. And um, first we need some ingredients for this report to work. Under metrics, we're gonna look for event count and we're gonna look for active users. And then you can click import. Under dimensions, we're gonna import the dimension search term. And we're gonna import the dimension event name. Yeah, there you go, import. So in the first step, I'm gonna make a list of all the search terms that were happening in this period of time. And I'm gonna say last 28 days. So it's gonna move along with me. If I open up this report in a week, it's gonna show me the last 28 days from then on. And um, I'm gonna call this search terms. So I want as rows, I want all the search terms. And then as values, I want all the, ev the event counts, so the number of searches, and then active users. And I want to limit this by event name exactly matches, and then we can just say search. If you want all the search terms, so you want to include both the regular search results page and the auto suggest, you can just safely 
remove this filter but if you want to make a specific report on the other suggest searches i'm gonna limit this with event name exactly matches search and then i'm gonna click apply of course it does not show anything because i just implemented it but let's remove the filter for demonstration sake you will find some search terms and then the amount of searches and then the amount of people that search on it. So if, if for instance, I searched on your site 10 times on the same search term, it will show 10 events with one user. I hope that makes it clear. So you could do some other things right here. So if I'm gonna make another free form, I could make a timeline for instance, of all the other suggest searches. So you could see over time what the behavior is of your audience. So under visualization, I'm gonna make a line chart as values i'm gonna say event count and then i'm gonna filter it by event name exactly matches search otherwise you will get every event that doesn't uh, make any sense you need only the search events so apply again this will not give me any data because i just implemented it but otherwise you will see a timeline of auto suggest searches on your site and then if I make another free form, you could also just want the total amount of other suggest searches. So under values, I'm just going to say event count. This gives me all the events. Again, this includes page views and file downloads. It doesn't mean a lot if you display it like this, but we want to limit this by event name exactly matches search. So we want only the search events here. And again, this will not show any data because I just implemented it. If I come back after a week or two, it will show me the total number of search events right here. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was clear. I hope it was helpful. If you like this video, please click the like and subscribe buttons down below. That really helps me get this video out to as many people as I can. Also, if you want to watch more, there's a link in the video description to a recommended a playlist full of videos just like this. All right, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.